Hey, hey, Blue Table fans. I thought I would just put the camera on while I was cleaning up the studio tonight. Uh, I'm actually about to call it quits for the day. Check it out. Got a Rick and Morty shirt. Love this show. My kids love it. My two sons and I, we, we all have this same shirt, so we're trying to, like, have a time where we all got them on at the same time. You know, that old thing. So anyway, um, by the way, some Gene Steeler cult guys just rolled off the line here. It's for a giant army. It's got like 180 figures in it. Crazy stuff. Got a real solid color scheme for that. It's sort of this um, white, grayish, off-white armor. The purple skin, dark, rusty guns with uh, green tubes and glowy stuff and that color scheme really 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 works it's really really exciting really 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 um yeah i'm working on this project that has this nurgle demon prince and an ariman in it and uh, that just needs magnetization and then it's ready to paint uh what else I went to go see uh, Spider-Man Homecoming with my kids today, and uh, it was really good. I was uh, I was really I was really excited about it. I think they put it together really well. It was a perfect palate cleanser after Avengers Endgame. You know where everything was like like it built up. There was 18 movies. It was all really serious. Fate of the Universe stuff going on. And then this one was just very lighthearted. It was low key, but it's still sort of, it's still sort of, um, you know, addressed some of the bigger issues, tied up some loose ends. And also, I think it, it really, it really set it up for like the next thing that's going on. And uh, it was very, it was very, very well done. Really liked it. Because, you know, a lot of times you see a movie and you're just like, uh, you know, you just, you can't believe it's that dumb, basically. And, uh, yeah, oh, I'm going to prime these guys. Those kobolds I saw, I showed you the other day. Yeah, got to get those going. And uh, what else? Let's see here. Uh, when I'm done with the first Kingmaker module, I'm going to make uh, like a display that shows all the miniatures that I did up for it. And you know, you just, you just got to pick away. I mean, if you paint a little bit every night and finish, you know, a couple guys, a handful of guys, and you do that consistently for a year, well, even if you only finished an average of one figure a night, well, you got 365 figures. And you do that for five years, now you got a collection going. And so, Sometimes people come in, they see my collection of figures, and they're just like, oh, blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, you know, it's really just picking away at it a little bit at a time. And, you know, uh, I don't condemn these things, but I don't drink or smoke, and I also don't play video games. And so, guess what? That gives me time and money to do these other things. So, well, anyway, again... <laughs> Not saying there's a problem if people do those things. I'm just saying, you know, that uh, it, free, it frees up a little bit of my time. Yes, I, I'm here. I'm, so I'm trying to figure out where to put these guys. So, yeah, I think they should go in Heroes. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just going to put them on display. <laughs> there we go. So anyway, my Kingmaker has been going so awesome that basically... I have a whole, an, a whole separate group that wants to go through it. Now with the first group, what I'm doing is I'm doing sort of a, uh, a low fantasy thing where it's, you know, it's kind of Game of Thrones level technology. And it's really cool. And I'm running it strictly, oh, strictly by the book. And, like, you just, I, I, I'm only doing, um, what was it, Advanced Race Guide, Advanced Player's Guide, and also, um, 
that's what, and then of course the core rule book. So basically just three books. And that solves kind of a problem that Pathfinder has, which is there's a zillion books that all these characters... So it's great because you can customize things, but it's difficult. Like if you're a DM, you can't keep track of all the feats and all the different things people can have. You know, it's just, it's just crazy. Oh, i got to put these Tau guys away. I really need to play some 40K. I've just been out of it, you know. Well, and the thing is now, I don't really need to anymore, you know. I've got a great client base. Whoops. Um, by the way, I'm a huge fan of a show called uh, Toast of London. Hilarious. Oh, my God. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see here. I think somebody texted me. Oh, hold on. Yes, I did mean to, but the moment has passed, period. Maybe tomorrow, question mark? All right, anyway. Check this out. This comes from a guild ball set. This little sort of anvil blacksmith thing. Barrels, and it's got little tools on it. So I just, uh, I just whipped that out in like five minutes, I guess. So, uh, yeah, pretty awesome. Oh, also, because of how fun and successful this has been, I've wanted to do another adventure path after this. Because for Kingmaker, I'm only doing, out of six parts, I'm only doing number one and two, which brings the players to seventh level. And then after that, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might, um, I might, uh, I might go on, but I, I doubt it. Kingmaker is like, like if you read all six of them, which brings the characters, I think, to 18th or 20th level, they just, they're not, they're not very cohesive. You know, it's all just a lot of exploration, and it was one of Paizo's earlier endeavors. So here you go. Here's the first two for that. I've shown these to you already. Let me show you the other four of them. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, there you go. Yep. Yep. And there's another one. And then here's the third one. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to run them. They're not very cohesive. I also haven't planted seeds, you know, and so if I do continue it, I'm going to make it into a free campaign where I just invent things and probably cannibalize the books for the parts that I want. The one I really want to do next is uh, Skull and Shackles, which I'll grab for you here. And that one is Awesome Possum. Oh, man. So there you go. And you start as like... Uh, uh, being uh, press ganged onto a ship with no equipment and like <laughs> they're gonna whip you <laughs> if you step out of line so uh, this is very exciting and then this is the second one and in that adventure path you actually become uh, you become pirates and have a ship and a stronghold and everything so it's, it's kind of in the vein of Kingmaker in that there's two levels of stuff going on there's a regular adventuring and exploration but there's also sort of this thing where you you know build up a kingdom or whatever and that is pretty cool all right what else um yeah that's kind of uh that's kind of my life uh let's see yeah well that that actually was quick i think i got everything picked up all right, guys, uh, if you're a client, you're waiting for your package to go out. We're doing a bunch of packing on Monday. Going to get those out the door. And uh, then on, um, let's see. Yeah, and uh, I've got a project update page for clients. It's online. I probably update it at least four to six times a week. And you can always sort of find out where, what stage your thing is in. Oh, and the crew's getting stronger all the time. I just, I really, uh, I really think the company is in many ways in the best position that it's been in 
in a long time. And what's funny is, looking back, like I realize how successful Blue Table has been. And just at the time, it didn't feel that way because I was in the middle of everything and just trying to like keep it all together. And this is a stage now where I really, I feel like I know what I'm doing. And I see, I see the progress more clearly and appreciate it, uh, I guess, uh, more easily. All right, well guys, pow pow pow, I will uh, see you tomorrow. Really leaving this time.